So I'm not going to read this right now. She's got some points and we had a little board here. Um, but yeah. Thank I'd you so much. Like also acknowledge uh, Tanya Longfield, who's here to support. Pardon? Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Rowan Brown. Um, I've lived in Chara for nearly 20 years, not actually 19, but not a lot of them yet, but a few years to go. <laughs> However, um, I personally was involved in the push for a Chara skate park for 13 years. I volunteered my time for 13 years to make this happen, and it was shut down um, basically because um, the bylaw, council's bylaws about noise and earthworks. Uh, and that was the opposition who took us, threatened uh, and bullied council, and council essentially folded. And this is what we're here uh, today to talk about, is actually bullying. It's no longer acceptable. We are being bullied by a person and people who live next to an active recreation reserve. Now, for God's sakes, if you buy next door to an active recreation reserve, one would expect an active recreation, that wouldn't one. For God's sakes, it's ridiculous. Corey Park Domain was gifted to our Tyra, to, to Tyra, for the community. Not for one person who doesn't want it across the road from him that bought next to an active recreation zone. It wasn't gifted to the, to the NIMBES. It was gifted to the community. And the community has supported this project for over 30 years. It's been in three community plans. There isn't a thing in the writing of the council and the purposes for council, why we are in existence, why you people have been represented and elected to serve the wishes of the community. Enough is enough. We are sick of it. Absolutely sick of it. And I'm not being mad because I do understand that you guys want the best for us. I understand that. But you are being bullied with the threat of legal action. And it's not fair. Okay? We are prepared to raise every cent for the skate park, 164000 whatever is projected on the um, on the report on the feasibility study, we'll raise every penny of that. We won't have a problem getting it, I guarantee you that. But we need you to stand up and say, Corey Riders Zone for Active Recreation. It's a permitted activity. It's a skate park that is in three community plans that our community has wanted, our children have wanted, and they have been bullied. We have been bullied. Always, every time. 100% guarantee. I've been like, I can feel myself getting emotional, which I said, don't do it wrong every day. <laughs> You've been hanging on to now, you say something wrong. <laughs> I don't want to say anything wrong, because I'm really, really thankful that you guys are here, and we hope this time to, to make this happen, because all it's about as you guys deciding to do the right thing for the community in a, in a, for a state park that's been on the three community plans that a strong majority of our community want. And that is the purpose of the Reserve Management Plan on the Koori Park Domain. <coughs> the Reserve Management Plan identifies that the Koori Park Domain should, number one, support sporting and recreational things that the community want. Two, provide things for children to do and, and get them get them going because it's healthy for them. They are our future. And it says that the Corey Park domain should group all recreational and sporting activities together to maximise the sharing of resources. This is what it already does, for God's sake. Rugby, there's a bar there, there's netball, there's basketball, there's cricket. Skateboarding is an Olympic sport, guys. This is not the 1920s when people think that people who serve and skate are losers, because they're not. This is elected a member of um, <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is that we are not losers. We are not losers. We are just people and we have rights. Now, in the community plan, a strong majority of respondents to the community plan that is currently in existence, 64% support a skate park. And the majority of those people said in writing, and I've personally counted them, that they want it on the Corey Park domain. Why? Because it's the only active recreation zone in Tyra. All this carry on about thinking about putting it on the PP or whatever, it's a waste of our money because it's not zoned for it. 
Okay, this is the only area in Tauru where um, it's zoned for skateboarding. It does not need a resource consent. It does not need to be notified, actually, because it's a permitted activity. John's telling me to calm down. <laughs> Bullying is no longer okay. This is about actually an ethical decision and it's about social responsibility. I'm just putting up there because um, this is about a process. So, as you pointed out, for Cory Park right domain, sorry, right domain, it's a permitted activity. But um, if it wasn't, it would have to go through a regulatory process. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what's happened previously, it's gone through a reg regulatory process. Um, so, you know, it's a process and yeah, we, I'd just like you to bear in mind that there's natural justice issue if you're referring to other parties that are not present in the negative. Okay, fair call, Sandra, and thank you for that. All I'm saying, honestly, is that it is a permitted activity. The Koori Park domain is open active recreation. This has been in three community plans. It completely stands with the three major points in the resource management plan. And the only reason it hasn't happened is simply because people who bought next to a door to an active recreation zone don't want it. They don't have that right. This doesn't need to be a notified anything. We should actually, you guys should make the decision to stand by that community, that community plan, and we, the group, the active group now, which is the, probably the 10th or 11th group over the last 30 years, have stood right here saying exactly the same thing, we will raise the money. Okay, so this is how we're feeling. Right now, my son really wants to be fine. But this is how we want to be. We want to be happy and enjoy our community. Let's make it happen. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Any questions? Bring it on. <laughs> Uh, and I know that the community board really wants to resolve this, so uh, we'll be supporting them and working with them to help okay, us along. Because I'd love to see something resolved after 30, 35 years in the making. It would be a big step forward. I have one question. As long as you get a skate park and it's in an optimal position, does it matter to you where it is as long as you get one? I can answer that one. Yes. Um, we don't want it anywhere except for Quarry Park. So yes, it does matter. And the reason for that is, we, over the years, have had so many occasions where this has come up. Well, what about here? Well, why don't we just re-look at there? Why don't we also just look at here? And this is why it hasn't happened. We have already committed as a community and as a district council to all the plan changes that we need. So we need to just get on with it at that location. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. When are we considering the council? When is it going to be on the next agenda? This is something that the community board is working through. So, we have to have an agreement from the council. Well, this is not something we discuss now. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank the community board so that we can get to a landing space and we are just being asked to support them in that, which we do. Okay. Are there any other questions of uh, present presenters? I just want to say thank you for presenting and we're listening to you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Okay, so are there any general public comments? Yeah. Is there a summary that we accept the presentation? Seconded, Terry. All those in favour? Yes, they are. Aye. Yes, carried. So items not on the agenda. I'm not aware of anybody talking the other one on the agenda. Any credit about the supplementary pack? Yes. Oh. That you can put in the Yep. Is that an item not on the agenda? No. It's any conflict of interest? Any conflict of interest? Any minutes for confirmation? Yes. 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 Yes.
And that was explained by Rob at the meeting, council meeting, where we discussed the IAD device. I think the whole um, issue, and I've got in my members report can talk about the regional part of the emergency management. Um, but I think we're all keeping a very open mind at this point in time about a the turning off of the sirens and b what's going to be um, you know the cluster of tools that we're going to have to warn people. So your fear about this IAD, I think you just need to wait for the result of the business case and um, I go from there. I could be a lot more blunt if you would like me to do Well, you can be blunt if you Yeah, if I was, it wasn't up to me. Uh, the council will not be investing any money into an IAD device, yeah. but we have rigorously tested it. Uh, as far as I'm aware at the moment, it is a tool in the toolbox, but not something that council or recognised funds yeah. will be going into. Yeah. Yeah. Just a question. I thought we resolved, and I'm trying to reach the memory, something about we weren't going to do a business case because the cost was involved. It, it's a terminology thing. Yeah. We, we were going away to do a, a, a risk management exercise, okay. and yeah. we were going to do a deeper dive into the IAD capability. <laughs> so, so the IAD is capable of delivering a service, but it's not one that this council is going to invest at all or invest in. I just wanted that to be very that's clear. Right. I mean, that, that's coming from me from what I know at the moment, but the committee, and you're right, Sally, is the committee needs to see the information and make some decisions as a committee before it comes back to council. So I don't want to preempt that. Yeah. Right. But Gary I, just, was... I just want to calm the farm. Yes, uh, thank you. I was trying to calm the farm and yeah. I could yeah. see ever increasing concern. But the Gary was, uh, Gary's asking about a specific email that he sent about an overseas company. Yes, and, and, that's, that's, and, and that was explained more and more at a previous council meeting. But essentially, it was totally outside um, 
being able to service a district like ours because it's mostly metro. Yeah, well, they, they, were, I, I, they just contacted me, but yeah. they're huge companies. Yeah. I, I remember it specifically, mm -hmm. so I, I understood it. Is everybody happy with that? Yeah. Great. Okay, cool. Um, Rip Audit and Risk Move, Tony Second and Murray. Any, any matters to be raised? There being none, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Any strong district council minutes? Do I have a mover? Martin, second vote. Robin, any matters to be raised? There being none, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. So we now go on to. Um, page, that's the end of the, that, so page 59, which is the establishment of the shoreline management plan. And um, Sally raised some good points on this, which I thank you for, Sally. Alright, so you want to leave it till later? No, no, no. Oh, right, okay. So the stuff in the agenda is to. Um, okay, so are people happy with the um, suggested proposals there? Do I have a move on? Sound like it's just moving it and seconding it, and then get the discussion going. Yeah, but um, the criteria seconded it. So just open for discussion, and we can have. Um, and uh, Sean. Sorry, Sean. Uh, uh, kia ora um, the, the first one is really about establishing a committee of council. Um, I think there's been some discussion on that already, and there's a terms of reference in the appendix. Um, this, there's two supplementary reports. The first supplementary report is mostly uh, housekeeping, I suppose, because we've moved away from a uh, governance of the project to a committee of council. We just need to reconfirm the members, which uh, as as proposed with the addition of uh, Sandra as the uh, mayor and the chair of Hara Hariki. Um, and then I'll probably leave the third one, which is um, about the coastal panel members, um, unless you want me to talk about that now, but we'll talk about that one after the, the first two are uh, resolved. Yep. Now, part of the reason for this is this is our first co governance arrangement, and so as such, it's really important. And, and this is why I thank Sally because she's alerted us to the importance of making sure that we get this wrong. And I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, and so, if we're going to do this correctly, we do it, we, we do, they do, there do has to be an adjustment for that, and um, also it needs substitutes for um, myself as being part of that as well. So So what's the adjustment I'm sorry? I just... um, chief to chief, having the chiefs oh. at the table basically. Yeah. And um, that's important to me. Yeah. So we need to be stepping up and not and treating this seriously and, and taking it seriously and giving it the importance it deserves right. uh, as a co-governance committee. I'm sure that the, this particular committee will only meet three or four times a year. That's yes, that's the my understanding. It's, it's actually the coastal panels that will be meeting more. So um, that's what this is about. So that have EWI been selected? They have now stepped up? Uh, we haven't had the EWI nominations yet, no. no um, with the exception, I suppose, of the, the chair of part of ADP, which is that part of so I see you push the meeting out to the 14th of the code. Yes. Right. We're just giving them a little yeah. bit more time. So it takes them a little bit of time. To, um, and will there be some protocols that we need to understand going into those meetings? Um, the, in, in terms of the committee of the council, I think the pro protocols will be consistent. There will, will be um, some, some consideration of, about how we want to run the meet meetings um, and, and we'll look for advice from um, Parahariki on, on, on that as well. 
So you want something like a yeah. beer or something yeah. before yeah. it even starts, you know, just a little bit like that. That's, that's yeah. Okay. The idea is to work together, and, and this is a really good opportunity to, to test that water since this is going to be um, the, the beginning of a number of co governance arrangements that are within the Turkey settlement. And so we're going to have to all be part of that whole process in all of our respective communities. Mm. I know Murray and Tony are already long way down that track anyway, don't you? Mm. So, um, so with that, yeah, Tony, yeah. go ahead. Okay, I was just, um, just want some clarification on the, the under the power to act. The second line down here, the committee has the power to approve the property for my management plans. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I'm um, still concerned about how to find what that is on council and the financial, any financial um, implications that arise as a result of decisions made by that committee centre. Well, I wouldn't expect that anything will be signed off until the council has um, had some input and workshopped it for. Definitely have a complete oversight of what's going forward. The whole council. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. It doesn't read like that. It's um, just one clarification. It's called your organ. Well, you can be specific. Page 63. Yeah. Power to act. Power to act. Second line. Second line. So, yeah. So it says the committee has the power to approve and adopt the shoreline management plans. Yeah. How binding, my question was, is how binding is that on council? Yeah, because it is, we need to have, it, it is binding, it would be binding, that's how yeah, I read yeah. it. So then, therefore, what concerns me is any financial ramifications come about as a result of those decisions which have to be in this council. I don't think that have to be resolved. Yeah, I think there's uh, a plan and there's an implementation of the plan. Um, so that there will be triggers and things that are developed in the plan, but the council will have the ultimate um, responsibility to implement some of the, the recommendations or the, the plan itself. So okay. you're, well, you're saying that the financial decisions will be separate from the management plan? So as an example, if there's a recommendation, when you get to that trigger to do this, we would then have to decide financially how we're going to make that work whether it's a partnership with the NZTA or, or mm -hmm. the implementation is a, another part of of this. Yeah. Okay. I okay. I'm just said it to the same yeah. decisions would be binding on council. Yep. That's fine. But that means that we've lost some control here as to the financial aspect of I believe. Exactly. And that's why I think and that's a problem. I agree. <laughs> Yes, well, I take that cause completely. It's opposition suggested so originally that the cause to, to provide governance to the shoreline management project. There are other causes that are direct opposite to that, and I don't believe you can have the two that are compatible. And I'm quite happy adopting the suggested resolution, but I think the other cause has got to come out because I think that's what you're doing. You provide governance to it, it's got to come back to council. So I think you've actually got two conflicting statements. Um, yeah. um, I'm just looking in terms of reference where it looks to me as it's written the committee uh, has the power to adopt the shoreline management plan plans and then the period is lined down uh, the committee will make recommendations to Kings Coromandel District Council on the implementation of the shoreline management plans. So I think the intention is the committee would adopt the plan but then the budget decisions would okay. still be a council decision but you could um, would make it uh, clearer if that, if that would assist. Oh, I would think then, and I would accept that. I think that that line, the committee will make recommendations to the Kings Crown District Council on the implementation of the shoreline management plans, should come up and, and follow on from the power to act that second line. So there's no doubt at all yeah, that the actual implementation, they need to be brought together. So clarity and you could possibly also make it clear that that's the budget decision. You know, um, to, yeah. 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 No problems with it at all, but just don't want to lose that financial yeah. control. control. When someone advises, I think that means it's got to be amended. 
Sorry, no. When someone advises that I think that's what it means, it's got to be amended. It's, it's got to be crystal clear. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sally? I just want to point out that I think that this is the first step of a change of power. And it's going to be an interesting process for us to get our heads around. And I think as a group, we could do with some advice about that. And uh, things like trust come up, like there's equal numbers of us around that table. So if something comes back to us that is a total surprise or something, well, then we've got our colleagues to look at as well. So I just think it's going to be an intriguing few years as we move through this new way of, um, of, of um, co-governance as opposed to our own. So watch the space in my opinion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Adon, um, you've got shoreline management plans. I would have thought it was just one plan. Just one plan for the whole district, isn't it? Um, oh, yes and no. Um, the, the idea is that there will be four plans, that there will be specific plans for the different coastal panel areas, yeah, but that's one, that's overarching, one overarching strategy and approach. So you're either adopting a strategy, the overall trauma management strategy, or you're dropping each each subsequent plan within it, which which is it? Yeah, it, well, it's both. So so really, it should be the shoreline management strategy, because then that means that management plans then fall to council for implementation. I don't think so. I mean, well, well I, my expectation is would would have four plans that would come together, and that would be the overall plan. There's four areas and they get developed with the strategies and then it comes to when you join them together, that's one big plan for the whole whole district. Um, but they are worked on separately. So therefore it's called the shoreline management plan. Yeah. Singular. Yeah. And to get to the plan, you have uh, plans. With implementation being the full responsibility of the council. This implementation oh, yeah. Of yeah, yeah, no, get it. Okay. Yeah. So how do we modify the wording to incorporate the consent expressed? Uh, my suggestion is that uh, resolution, proposed resolution three, uh, runs on uh, at the end of saying subject to um, amendment to make it clear that. DC retains control of budget decisions related to the implementation of the shoreline management plans. Yeah, that's pretty good. Can you with that? Yeah, so just read that back. Yeah. Yeah. the last meeting we had, the discussion about the co governance and the fact that. DC, the coastline by and large, and where the money will be, it's going to be another party. If we have a disagreement, say we're not going to support it, we're not for that. That would destroy the relationship. So, as Rob said to us, we had hoped that those decisions would be well caucused before we got there. Exactly. So, when those decisions were being made, we were all on the same page rather than get there yeah. and find no surprises. Correct. So that's why I'm talking about our last meeting. Yes. But I agree that it needs to be tied up so that the ambiguity is removed. Yep. So I don't, do, do you think there needs to be any, anything in here around the council being, being kept kept informed or weakening any activities, any of this beforehand? Or? The wording that was suggested was right because the financial stuff is going to be primarily us. So we need, you can't have another party that's non elected or external to us making decisions that want us and our ratepayers into anything without us having the real skin in the game. I would have right. thought that, oh, sorry. I would certainly recommend that any members of the committee that wish councillors to workshop in should do that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so if you've got your name in place on this, if you would even compare them. It's not well, sure. yeah, right. So we've got a little bit of resolution of three in there. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't yeah. make you a little more comfortable. Yeah. 
just didn't want to get handy with the invoice that we had. Yes, that, Martin. Are you happy with that, Martin? Yeah, and, and, and are we okay as far as the differences between the committee having power to approve and adopt, but the TCDC having the implementation? I'm, I'm just, I'm just not exactly sure of the difference between the adopting and the implementing. I think the adoption is around that plan itself, like the words and yeah. then the. If we, if we want to run a true co-governance scenario, yeah. we have to give decision-making power. Yeah. Or else it's no to... longer a co-governance scenario. So I totally agree, Rob, but we need to retain financial Absolutely. And uh, I think that's a very integrity. that was a very good discussion because I think that's tied up that, that whole issue. So that's decision making but no, no power speed. Financial delegation. That's right. No power speed. Can I be the one decision on the one plan, essentially, at the sign off on the one plan? And I have every confidence that there will be a draft that will be workshop by council. That, that, that committee will also produce a whole heap of recommendations and, and will adopt things yeah. and then involve other agencies. And there's certainly no anticipation that they'll be able to spend that agency's money either. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the ability to make decisions, but actually it's the agencies that carry out the work that lead to actually undertake their financial decision-making We can make a decision to put it in Z to sort out the Okay, look, with those amendments, are we moving and seconding? Well, the move, we have a mover. We have something to add to Terry seconded. Yeah, we're going to have those I just think it should be explained the talking behind that with our partners. Uh, just if they read the original re resolution, you know, draft, yep. that we should actually actively tell them that our conversation and why we put that in so that you start off on the oh, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I'm happy as a mover. Okay. Yeah. Shut up now. No, no, it's good. Your recommendations are sound, silly. Thank you. That's awesome. Right. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Amon and Shannon. Shannon? So the, the, the next, next one is a supplementary report on yeah. the well, we'll move this to the first, and then um, all those in favour of this hour? Aye. Yes, carried. And we'll now go to the supplementary because it's got other recommendations. So is everybody looking at that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now for the um, second one, we have the membership, which has changed. So if, um, okay. So tested resolutions. But we've got, um, is, do I have a, is everybody happy with that? Do I have a mover? No, I'm a mover. Terry, do I have a seconder? And then we'll have it for discussion. So you're rescinding and just reappointing? Yeah. We're rescinding and reappointing at any match. All the same stuff. The backup board. It doesn't actually say. Yeah, that um, so it doesn't say who the other two will be. Backups. Yeah, the who are they backup for? Yeah, Mr. Council got me as backup to the shoreline management plan number five. Yeah, Well, we need to stand for what it is, the 5.3, you just, you can just be part of the committee. Uh, 
yet worried that we're going for the status quo rather than anything dramatic. Well, on, on the variety of tools we have, sinking lid is the, the gold standard, the hardest tool we have. But you, you're completely right in that the number of venues we've had has gone down, the number of machines we have has gone down, although we're still over twice the national average. But the amount of money we've spent this district and nationally has just kept going up. It's gone on? It's kept, just keeps going up. Is it through the venues or is it online? This is purely pokey machines and venues. Um, and just in our district as well as nationally. Well, what Sally says is right, but at the end of the day, it's only a case where you've got 10 people in the venue or 100 people in the venue. You're not going to stop people that want to go gambling. Oh, like you know, there's only one TAB in town, but you know, we've closed the one down here. They're all going to bet somewhere else. I'll say, so it's an ideal solution to say that the sinking lid would be the best solution. But it's not the best solution. 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 It's not the best you're not going to get there for 50 years because you know, yeah, so change that. So I suppose what I'm saying is that this is one tool, isn't it? Yeah, and that's it's all. not the golden um, sort of the sort gold, gold standard. standard. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. if I want to reduce the harms of gambling, I have to do it somehow else other than this. Mm -hmm. Yes, Terry. Yeah, question. I thought uh, John about the rules because you used to be only apply for the areas where the gaming machines were for the money. Has that changed or can you apply? Like if you wanted to get local money, they said, is there any machines in your area that you can. Uh, that's, oh, so you're talking the community funding side? Yeah, yeah, it's funding. Um, the funding model is slightly changed in that now 40% <coughs> of the money they make from pokies is meant to go back into the community. Yeah. However, that can be nationally or um, or locally. So we had last year $10.6 million uh, taken from this community by pokey machines, but only about, I think, $2.6 million uh, came back directly to this community. Some of it went to like sports groups that across district boundaries, and some of it went nationally. So they're required to give 40% back to the community, but it doesn't have to be that specific community unless it's a term of reference um, oh, so in the tradition. So you want more people applying to try and get it back? Is this what Definitely. The I would love more people too. That's why I put a rugby player on the front yeah. of the social report. Uh, <laughs> they just remember that for the community. It's a great opportunity to go and begging for money. Heaps. 26 times the amount the community board gives out. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I just make a comment which I find quite interesting. We've got a high spend, mm. and yet we've got an older than average population. Mm. And it's interesting that the little bit I do on the village I look after, two people have lost their houses through gambling through voting machines. And that's in a very small section that I have. Two have lost everything. One being the son of the GP who spent half a million dollars. Closing machines in Winnyanga, and one person that was operating the closing machine wouldn't kick them out, and they spent all the rest of the money there. And we actually went around all the venues, so don't take this problem like this is a huge, huge problem. Yeah. I've seen the end of it. Let's call the last four because it's the worst type of game late. Yeah. Okay, all right, in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes, carried. Right, the next one is open spaces. Page 132. Good morning. Good morning. So, do you want to have a mover? John moves, do I have a seconder? Yeah. Sorry, Terry. Any discussion? A lot of work. There being no. All those in favour, thank you very much, please. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes, Well done. Are you, uh, are you happy with the results? Awesome job. <laughs> um, yes and no. Um, it's a work in progress, I think, open space and, and you know, getting it, getting it right. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a lot, quite a lot of actions in that action plan. Yeah. I think um, 
the council will be good to take those on board. Seriously, that this list doesn't sit on the shelf. You took yeah. on some people's ideas, which is good. So, well done. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of work, a lot of work. Actually, I did have one thing that I was going to query. Um, Sorry, I did have one thing I was going to query. Um, I was surprised that you had action plans within the Open Spaces Management Plan. We had identified the funding for the spring 21 um, and 2031 period. So I thought I thought that was um, interesting that it was in a plan as opposed to being outside of the plan. Uh, anyway, so the strategy is sort of an overarching document and it's guiding council's direction and decision making around open spaces and community facilities. But in, but the, there's a res, the reserves management plan sits under that. And are governed under the Reserves Act. So this is about council's decision making, whereas the reserve management plans are dictated largely by the Reserves Act. Okay, and then just one last thing was actually on page uh, oh, it's 23 of the plan about open space and EWI. It doesn't, one, I noticed that one of the submitters raised concerns about um, in treaty settlement process, inclusion of preparation development management plans. And, and um, they were concerned that those needed to go out for public consultation. They will, yes. Yeah, Absolutely. so that's still it. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so, um, can I move? Yep. 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 So, okay, so draft significance and engagement <coughs> policy, page 210. So, are there any kind of member for that? Receives, approves, and delegates and gives notification. So let's go. Move to John. Do I have a second one? Yep. Robin, thank you. Do I have any? Oh, Tony. Oh, no, I'm on the general. I've got your comments. Do you want to turn it? Right on. Uh, on page 217, uh, so the first one is strategic assets, reserves. So reserves fit in the road, water, storm, or wastewater reserves. Yeah. The above mentioned are uh, district funded, reserves are. So I'll just raise that again. Reserves are funded locally. And I have an issue with that because the majority of the reserves, by number and value, sit in the bay. But the other one that I raised at the last meeting was why we have community housing on this because we don't have any. And we have one thing of expectation. Um, and as outlined uh, in the report, the reason um, community housing has stayed is because we own land that community housing is located on. Right, I think so that's uh, why it's stayed. We were unsure, so we've gone and checked that. We've gone and checked. Okay, last one I raised it because what I know is that when people come to us, they were, it's a bit like the four pillars of the RMA, that when people want to do something, they go and say, there they are, if they were taken out now, it's sort of a positive way back again. So when it's there, someone say to us, as part of your strategy, it's community housing, so now we want something. And uh, I don't think it's going to happen. No, because it's managed to be from that place. That's right, well, I just raised it, because we raised it at the last meeting, with the yeah. peers here. And Steve's taking Steve, we don't actually own community housing, we land own the land, at least the land on which the community housing is offered. Yes. Right, so, so we're actually talking about housing. community land, not community housing. Is that clear? Agreed. Because I think that the housing is actually in the name of a trust, like the, like the Community Bay Community Services Trust. It's the it's the it's so it's, it's the land, not the, not the, not the improvements. Property. That's my that's why I'm so that's what um, our property manager said, but I I am not privy to the details of the lease, but I don't know if we have a maintenance function or whatever. But when I we spoke to the we property don't. manager, I understand that we don't have anything to yeah. do with community. Right, right. It is a clear distinction. We have we own the land. 
but the housing is organised by another entity. So Any suggestions on how to describe so, it? So that's uh, um, after community housing uh, in brackets. Land, land, land for community use. I'm unsure if that's legal, but that would be my suggestions for a clarity. Land, uh, land for community use. Uh, um, but that would catch your more than community housing. housing. I would just leave community housing and probably just put in brackets land only, and then it's then we we we're making yeah, much more rich. Yeah. 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 yeah, And then if uh, you're on every term that that's uh, in that every way of explaining it, then we adopt it. We'll have that correct. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, and the other thing that came up from the last meeting was um, the definition of significant activity and the fact that it had a monetary value to it. So we've gone away and we've looked and um, we can take out any reference to monetary value, we can have it as a percentage of an activity, or we, Bruce and I and Steve have been talking, we could increase it to five million dollars, which is what most councils have between two to five million. So where are you looking at specifically? Um, page 218. This is a threshold for where it sits. It's a threshold for something being defined as a significant activity for the council. So you're saying that in general, councils have between two and five million dollars? Yes. Right. And it kind of makes sense now with them. A million dollars is pretty quick change. change. Yeah. The suggestion from um, Bruce was um, uh, to increase it to five million. Um, uh, and I mean, it is going out for consultation so people could give a, give a view on that change. All right, so that's only to an activity, it's not to the value of an asset. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah, great. So, yeah. okay. I thought two to five was good. good. Benchmark. Have people have with that? Yeah, yeah, like a million. Okay. So five. Well, that two. Yeah. So do you want a specific number? number? Oh, right. I, specific number. I would like a specific number. Two. Three. Sounds a nice number. Five. 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 So, where are you wanting to change it? At least the quantum of significant activity. I need a number between two and five. So, suggesting two and a half million. No, no I'm, I'm saying start one. Start one? Okay. Start one. Well, uh, and see what the community So, you don't think that one million is significant? Not today, say. So. No, no, no. You wish, I just wondered whether this is a line that we, that we're making capital action we go into the million. Which we find in our, in our other policy, which anything is we buy over a million is significant, so we got to to be out of conservation. I know this is an activity, but I wonder whether the two should be aligned. And I find the other one a bit inflexible, so I wonder whether we should set both of two and give and, and just have some thinking. So you're saying that like this, I mean when we walk Monk Street and Winnie Anger, that was a million and we were we were hamstrung around that. We went out in public consultation, all that. And I think the way that the place is going, we need to do a So I just, I just think the two, the two policies would be a lot. What do you think, Joe? Um, I feel after the feedback we've got on the plan and just through the shift, the H2 Crad and Y, people are wanting council to be more open and transparent. And the concern I've got is if we change it for $1 million, are we then giving the impression that $1 million is a significant amount of money on a project? Even $1 million is always helpful. Donna's got a question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Donna, Donna. <laughs> In my view, I support a group of five. We yeah. talked about it. Um, and you can see, like, as Murray said, it's also based on 
an LTP amendment as well. So we have to be really careful about what the level triggers an amendment as well. So that, that space will get some of the policy. So there is a real juggling act between what you know what is a, what is a safe amount, I guess, for for that. Um, yeah, and we have looked back a number of other councils and the majority are around the now. So this isn't not coming back to us, this is about going out to the public. Yes. That's right. When it must go out, yeah. and when we consider whether we go out to the public or not, this is a must. So you just have to be really careful with and by trying to manage risk that we don't tie everything up so much that we can't do anything because we're consulting all yeah, the time. I know, I know. Um, so, so I'll be happy with that. If there was a rider, unless the council determines otherwise. The council can always determine that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Through the chair, yeah. also I'd like to point out to um, the elected members that there's other triggers in this policy mm -hmm. that will trigger us to go out for consultation, so it's not only yeah. this month we do. So what's everybody comfortable with then? Well, I think hearing from Donna on that, that five sounds like it gives us a, uh, a benchmark. And then we can trigger anything over there, can we? I'm on board with five. Doesn't, the five doesn't mean it has to be five. No. You can go out at any time. That's just a trigger. Yeah, just a trigger time, and you must go. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's too naughty. I'm not going to say it. No. No, no. A million, ten years, a million dollars ten years ago, wouldn't buy five million today. So. <laughs> All right, where are we at here, people? Okay, we're definitely not one. So we're we're now we're at two between two and five. Five, two, two, five. One and five. Two, two. I'm not ladies, but I'm, I'm quite confused. I'm, I'm sort of confused. I'm not like enough experience to feel confident. That so what I'm voting on, just to make sure I'm not confused, is that this is a must-go-out to consultation at five mil. We have other policies and things that trigger management not be, uh, coming back here for decisions around buying stuff and doing stuff. So as long, unless, if we're not happy with five mil, well then those processes aren't crystal clear and going well as far as I'm. So I'm going for the five and let's make sure that we've got the policies and procedures correct, that we all don't live, and we live in a no surprises environment. Well, my, best advice, my best advice to you, that, that's correct, so, so my best advice to you is it's not generally the things that are contained within the significance of engagement right. policy that will trip you up when it comes to not engaging with the community. Yeah. It's those things that are actually necessary to do in confidence, in committee, that then get found out in our communities that trip us up. So, uh, that's the sort of type of property transaction that we sort of referred to earlier on that can catch us out when it's actually you making decisions on and, with, and for your communities. Um, so th it's actually the choice of when we want to communicate, whether it's actually a consultation or whether it's a communication. That's really the crux of uh, engaging with the community in terms of um, the decision making process because the five billion dollars is an arbitrary figure. It is binding you to nothing other than telling you if you're making a decision that has this value, you must consult. It's not stopping you consult. So I would say lift the banner higher, but when it comes to uh, the community knowing about what we do, it's always to consider seriously what we are doing and how early we can inform or, or involve our community. Doesn't stop you consulting, but there are issues that you can't consult on, or you should not consult on, but you should make decisions on, but you never meet that threshold for it. Am I sort of being clear there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think, I think, and the other part is, I don't want to unintentionally bind us when it's not necessary, it's just, it's just creating an unnecessary cost. Um, in a situation that we haven't foreseen, 
Whereas we can do our full public consultation on anything at any time if we, if we so deem it to happen. So, um, and, and that is given as a part of our role. So, yeah, I have to go to the five, so I, I can't, and, and I realise the change of dynamic of the value of, the value of things. How the same thing that 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 cost ten dollars now, same thing right now cost twenty. If you put that into a greater context, um, yeah. So we can always change it at another at another time if we find that we've been caught out by it. Presumably, um, once this has gone to consultation, we might get a lot of pushback about it anyway. Great. So it's true. Yeah, good girl. Thank you, William. Yeah, it's absolutely true. So, yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm quite happy to support five. Right. John? Go on, I'll go five. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm going to start. You can get both. You can Martin? I'm five. Yeah. You're five? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, that's, that's good. So we'll, we'll sit there at five. And um, Rob is quite right, it's going out for public yeah. consultation, so um, other people might have comment. Right, um, are there any other matters to be raised? John, have you got anything? A lot of work in here. Anything, anybody else want any matters to be raised? No, we have a reason to do that. If that's the case, no further discussion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Can I just acknowledge the amount of work in 2.34 and 5 and how I just want to acknowledge the planning and strategy team for pulling a whole lot of stuff together that has been behind. So thanks, Joe, and the people that work with you because um, a lot's happening and that's really Thank important. You. Yeah. Thank you. They're awesome. Thank you, Sylvie. Um, well, Joe, just so that we don't have to bring you back again, um, and so that you can um, carry on doing it. Yeah, yeah, well, look, I did, can, I, can I mention that? Go on. Joe's got a slip disc. So, yeah. so I didn't realise that until just now. So if we can quickly move to the variation 2.8 on page 446, um, which is Taylor State. Yeah, so it sounds so like. And then she can hobble away and she said, well, it might be better. She probably needs to go to kill herself. Okay. Oh, no, you don't want that. Yes, okay, yes. so, uh, so, 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 and basically it's for a post structure plan at Hotwater Beach for 45 lots. Um, when council resolved to accept the request for the variation, it withheld, it held the right for it to make a submission. Yeah. So we made a submission saying you need to be like self-sufficient, have proper infrastructure, stuff like that. Um, we got 28 submissions, three in support, one being the applicant. Um, the rest opposing because of infrastructure issues, stuff like that. We've talked to the applicant since then and Rob um, luckily gave us some less time because I think it had more of an impact with Rob being there than just two planners talking to another planner. So they are actually now going away to rejig the structure plan and hopefully with a lesser number of lots, which will go to the hearing. So we, I took this one on the chin because we discussed it, but we didn't have a time frame. Yeah. So I just said, look, I worked with Joe on it, and I just and it, it was eleventh hour stuff, which is unfortunate. But um, so I I, I uh, took responsibility to um, reiterate our concern around water and wastewater within a forty-five block subdivision in a place like that, especially after we talked about our concerns over water and wastewater particulation outside of our main centres, so outside of what we supply. And we haven't got to that landing space yet about what we're going to do about that as a council going forward, whether we put moratoriums or whatever on. So it's absolutely imperative that we, I'm like you, and I'm pretty sure that you guys have supported that discussion. 
um, expressed our concern around the number of watts. Because the other thing that we haven't taken into account that with 145 watts was a consequential impact of 90 odd buildings potentially on those lots. Mm -hmm. 90. So just the stormwater alone um, is a biggie. And so look, the developer wasn't pleased, wasn't at all happy, but um, uh, I'd just like to thank Rob for stepping up and, and um, dealing with that and trying to work with the person that had the structure plan. So that's the background to it. I thank Joe very much for working with me on that. Um, yeah, just to get it right. And I think to what it reflected, and hopefully moving forward, we won't do it again. Um, we've had a pretty lax approach using structure plans mm -hmm. in the past. So the expectation from the planner who was based here um, was the fact that the structure plan would be fine. He didn't take into account it was 45 lots compared to a three lot structure plan or a 20 lot structure plan. And we, we've used structure plans to settle appeals to um, deal with issues. And, you know, moving forward in the new R resource management arena, you know, we're going to have to get a little bit more careful about what we do and how we allow it because it could, be, if we keep doing it, it places a big burden on council, big burden um, where it should actually be on the developers if they're looking at 45 lots in the middle of nowhere doubling the size of a small settlement. People live in a settlement because of small. It's small. just a concern around water supply for a start and concern around what the impact of wastewater from a whole lot of um, wastewater systems because there's no wastewater plant and then the, the third part is, is stormwater and so we did also write a, a target rate should any particular services be required in the future because it's incredibly expensive. Then you get to road in. Huh? Then you get to road in. Oh, yeah. 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 So we only scratch the But it's, it's, the, it's the water availability of rivers anyway, right from the get go. So um, we're, we're moving on for you, Joe. Um, um, do I have a move for the resolution? I'll move. Move, tidy, seconder, Martin. Any further discussion? There being none. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes, Carrie, thank you so much. And I think we get better very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk back on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, at page 227 for the demand strategy, was there any matters? I'm going to move it for a second. I'll move it. Move it. Okay. Seated, Murray. Yep. Any discussion? The bit I'm interested in is some of these numbers and the peak population data that we plan on. Because I've sat in a number of meetings of recent times, uh, some from Kubota, some from Rationale, some involving economic development, some connected jam, and they start talking about numbers. And I've only read talk about the numbers and we're either. But even now, these external agencies are saying we're using sort of pretty raw data. So what if the for instance, put together yeah. is high level data and it's not very accurate because it doesn't actually look at specific towns. And we look at these things here, these are very specific towns. And because I've seen what people used to say was happening with the Agam about the growth, and we have said forever that the numbers are not right. The only right number has been the number that John Wright, the principal of the Superior School, has given us, which has been plus or minus two people for the last 10 years that I can record. And so I think, uh, so I'm still interested in how good is this data? Because we're talking about massive infrastructure issues and massive dollars. So and I do not believe the numbers myself, because I can t tell you, if we believe the numbers that we plan on, which will be um, populating this stuff, they are wildly wrong in Woody Allen. Not by 50, not by 100, by hundreds of people there. So I have a real concern uh, about how we get this information um, in terms of how many people are in Mercury Barbie. Over these periods of peak demand. 
Because I think that there's a lot more than what is here, and just like the permanent population data is more than what we plan on. So I just have a, I just, it's, and it's just, we, we were sat in some meetings uh, on other issues and potential developers wanted to come to town and, and the, um, the information they were using. And when I started to raise these things, I said, oh, well, I'll put the APA back and look at it because that is our problem. We don't have good data upon which to make our assumptions. And if you don't have good information, you don't have good suits. So uh, I just know the problems coming down the road for us. I don't have one. I'm just well, my question is how do we validate the data? Because I don't know. Unless I go and physically count them and tell you, and you believe me, and write that in. So where do we get our information from to populate this? Because I don't think... Right, so put your question to Bruce. Okay, you feeling better? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't want to poison everyone, so, um, so I'm hanging out at home here. Um, yeah, so um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, Tony raises a good point. What I'd say firstly is that the figures in the, um, some of the figures in the water demand strategy are from the 1617 peak period figures that we used. Um, now there's some errors to do with those figures that, um, that was apparent at that time. A lot of that stuff was from the cell phone data. And so if you look at some of the figures, you've got very high figures showing in Coromandel Town. And that was to do with um, the cell tower, which is, um, pinging people who are in Matarangi as well as in Coromandel. So um, so that's that's kind of well understood. Um, what I would say is that that's only one measure that we use when we're doing our planning uh, and we take a lot of things into account and, uh, and things don't change that rapidly year on year. So we can actually track and see the changes coming from um, the amount of water people are using in towns as well as obviously the wastewater going out, rubbish bags and all those kind of things. So we actually factor a lot of um, data into our decision making and then we've got that flexibility to move um, projects as required. So, so it's not a it's not a totally theoretical um, calculation, is what I would say. Jerry. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Tony too that those numbers aren't right. But I know the cell phone towers they will count the VTOP numbers. Well, they'll count them pretty accurately, and they provide that information. So, and I hear what you're saying, Bruce, about other methods of uh, picking up this number, but. When you see them in a, a, a grid like that at 9,500, we know that that's just hundreds of thousands and thousands of pounds what the peak demand would be. So we need to have an understanding of that really uh, to, um, to have accurate uh, understanding of what the water's been, you know, the demand, demand's been provided. So um, 9,552 summer is just not correct. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd be, I'd be uh, inclined to say, uh, agree with Terry on that. It'd be way out. Yeah, 7664 of Woody Anna peak yeah. is nonsense because there's over 5,000 there permanently. I think the other one, too, is when you look at these peak demands, we've got 300 odd people that are not connected paying a water fee. So they have to be factored into somewhere along when you're talking about a peak demand. So if they become connected, they would then be another uh, additional um, addition to the volume of water required. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Um, and and I, I suppose the thing is, what I'd say is that we, we're not putting everything on those numbers, you know, so that's not the intention of those numbers and that's not why they're presented in that strategy. Uh, we know how much water we're using, um, you know, every day of every year. Um, so we've got that data. So that's the best data that we've got. We can track the increasing trends of that. It's not suddenly going to go from a thousand cube a day to two thousand cube a day from one summer to the next. So it's increasing over time. Uh, we know how many additional connections are being added each year to each township. So we actually have we have pretty good data on that information on that um, that water you know water connections and water use. So the other thing is that there's no way you can um, it's it's not like a really fine tuned calculation because you never know how many people are going to be in each house. So um, from different summers and I pick this summer with no international travel, we'll probably have a really high demand and there'll be a very high number of people per dwelling. So so there's a, there's a whole range of um, of data and metrics that you can use. And I think what it comes down to is that we can never um, actually think we're too clever with the way we do our calculations. It's actually fairly basic. It's actually 
back to first principles um, and and really looking at it from that perspective. And that's how we that's how we do things. Actually, the, the most accurate that I'm hearing is from your collection of the data, your actual consumption each year over the peak periods compared to the non-peak periods. And because you're collecting that each year, you can do a comparative analysis of that incremental increase that yep. we're seeing. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing those figures, actually. Yeah, correct. No, that's correct, Sandra. Any other questions? Um, that's all right. So we have a mover and we have a seconder. Any further discussion? There be none. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes, carried. Well done, and thank you very much for your hard work. And go back to bed. <laughs> I hang out here. <laughs> I hope you test. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hear you now. You've got mute. Okay, thanks, Bruce. Radio. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, radio. Right. So we're on to the page 264, the draft route reserve management plan. Here it Good morning. Good morning to you both, and I hope you're both doing well. Yeah. Um, so, um, do you want to have a mover? No, we Sigma. All right. Now it's up for discussion. I'll start it off with uh, page three. Um, we just wondered if we could change of breaches of to regarding. Oh, sorry, page 268. Two, six, okay. And what about is this? 268? Yeah, yeah. with co governance of reserves. So we're working back reserves. And then the other one was um, I got a query around um, third line where it says where reserves are subject to team of processes. Public submissions will not be invited. Sorry, what was that? Where about saying? So same page. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the co-governance. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. So co-governance, um, that's uncharted territory. So at this stage, we, we won't be taking submissions on co-governance reserves. And that's been standard throughout the whole of Coromandel and Thames. After the co-governance arrangement is set up, then we will go through the same process and create new reserve management <coughs> plans for those reserves. And treat in partnership with the EU. Uh, okay, so, so in terms, the ones that are under, you know, stated they weren't part of our management plan. Yeah, so that, that's. Yeah, I don't think that's here, personally. I don't find it just very, just very clear. It just says, we reserve the subject to sediment process, cover decisions will not be invited. At, at this Does point. it say at this point? Point. Yeah, so yeah. people know that they'll have an opportunity later, but at the moment we haven't got our whole partnership together. Because it hasn't been signed yet. Yeah, separate management will prepare for a process and then public consultation will be undertaken mm -hmm. at which point. So it actually just uh, it just needs uh, an addition to the last sentence, actually. That's yeah. the case. Good point. Just, just to reiterate the uh, um, yeah. was it? Okay, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I guess just from a process perspective, the report's written, it's in the public agenda. Um, it's not going to be able to be edited, uh, but it can be noted in the minutes, the discussion around it, and okay. the clarity of it. Just you wouldn't mind, yeah. yeah. I just, just wanna... Okay. Well, a question to Jared. Uh, yeah, I see the same categories that uh, the reserves form under. You've got there. So the different things from local purpose, government purpose, recreation, etc. Did you change many classifications during this discussion? Um, well, we weren't able to change the reserve classifications, but what we did is uh, we we may have uh, yeah, changed the categories. 
the category that's yeah. what you referred to. Yeah. So the reserve is classified under local purpose yeah. recreation, so we can't change that. No, so the reserve is actually can change the activities from the past categories in terms of civic nature, uh, local neighbourhood, etc. We have been, would be modifying those. So you have made some changes there? Well, they never had them. Oh, right. Yes. We've, we've, right. we've introduced the categories because they are a form of um, yes, management, manage, um, national standard management um, practices. So they weren't in the former um, reserve management plans. They were all that was in there was the reserve classification, which is really broad. Um, so we kind of drilled down, I guess, with the category. So there was two things: there's a reserve classification under the Reserves Act, which is your recreation, scenic, historic and local purpose, okay. those are the, generally the uh, main ones, and then there's the categories which are your civic, cultural heritage, neighbourhood, uh, recreation and ecological languages. And that, 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 that's more about the management of the reserves. So when you get to the act, active and passive ones, like we're talking about rugby fields versus, uh, did you get to that classification? That's district plan. District plan, right. Well, I just yeah. understand what that Yeah, so district plan um, has separated the reserves into um, recreation active, yeah. recreation passive. Yeah. 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 Right, okay. Uh, during the process, we went to visit a lot of reserves, not all of them. And I have a question in terms of the accuracy of some of the classifications. And I'm referring to one on page 357, which is a Rabbit Way Reserve, which says it's a recreation reserve. Well, A, you can't get into it to recreate it, and it's actually only run over by leaves and self sown plants um, that are, in fact, a fire risk, and it's full of old building material. And uh, Rabbit Way now is one vacant section that's built up. So, if there's a fire, you can't get in there, and the adjoining houses to that reserve go up with smoke as well. Then it says uh, there's no issues really with it. Um, it says it lacks signage. Well, why would you have a sign going to something that's actually only an overgrown bit of land that was left as part of a subdivision that no one's ever had to walk into? You don't want to take anyone there because they'll ring us up and say, why don't you clean it out? Um, so I'm just saying there's no need to provide any signage, and we don't provide any maintenance of it. And maybe it should be reclassified as a drainage reserve or something else, because it's actually just simply a worthless piece of land that has no value to our community at all. It's something in the day that was given to us in lieu of development contributions yeah. to reduce someone's liability. And I have concern now, I'm particularly concerned, because right opposite me, and I always think after no rain for seven months, if that had gone up, probably I went up. At least they just spent the time hosing my house and then it burned down. So the houses around I've raised it before, and it's, they've said they've been and looked at it, but I don't know who looked at it. It's an eye crime trouble right there. And it is full of old corrugated iron and pipe and glass and bricks and wood. Uh, so if you're going to have it as a reserve, and it's recreation, we just go and clean it up so people can go in there. Otherwise, don't put a sign. This is why it's going out for drug consultation. I appreciate that, but when it does, I'll assure you that 90% of people will not read the detail of this, and it will just simply be like this for the next time we go out. So it's been here for the last, since 1995, and I've raised it myself virtually every year I've done it. So, so I'm not really, honestly, I'm not really worried if it does burn down, but there will be many more of these around the place. I don't know if you would expect to come up with the um, classification. Because I'm sure we haven't done it. So, so I agree. Okay. So we'll expect your submission. <laughs> well, I've got them down. I've got them on my pocket. I've done this before. It has not been listened to. And this will be one of a hundred or more other ones that are the same. Well, at least it's in the right jacket. So, yes. Well, yeah, we've made a statement from here, so we might have it. From an operation perspective, Tony, I'll send it to this round there. Yeah, they walk into the top of my door, and I'll come looking to show them. Whereas, I don't know. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't find him out to walk into it. Honestly. And if you do, you've got to walk for a private property to get in, because there's no access to it. 
but it's simply dead land. And I think we've got dozens of these. Uh, on, on the map, it says that you should be able to discuss yes, that. But, yeah, but that's what Tony's saying. No, it's it's inaccurate. The information is inaccurate. So However, it was at the event might be now. Okay. So, are there any other matters to raise? No, no. Joe, just put another one. Just so marginal scripts and things like that owned by Doc, and we include them as reserves that we manage them. Uh, so let's stop. Crown Land, if we have a formal control and management agreement, yes, they will, they will be in there, but marginal scripts. Oh, there's nothing usually. Anything you've got a formal arrangement with Doc? Yeah, or? Yes, it will be in the reserve yeah. management agreement. Any other questions? There being none, I'll the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Did you want to do the uh, next two and then we come back after the morning call? Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Okay. Uh, next two temporary alcohol bands for extra extra rock four by four. Do I have a mover? Terry, think that John. So uh, any discussion? Bring it on. <laughs> there being none. <laughs> All those in favour, please say aye. Yes, it's carried. Angle Dock and Drum Report, 456. Oh, second. Oh, second. Big Murray, second to Sally. Any discussion? Sorry, yeah. How many people work in the dog dog park? Is one one specified person or more? Or security? Are you you're the dog person? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, so for the we have um, a bylaws team leader and six uh, bylaws officers, and part of their role is animal control. But they also um, do the bylaws such as parking and breeding. Yeah. Can I just say? Uh, to, to you both, you do a great job and, um, and your team. So I'd just like to thank you all very, very much uh, and appreciate all the work that you do. It's awesome. Thanks thank you. Can I have one question? And it's just, I think Tony's talked about it before, and just the percentage of um, how much does the co fees cover the cost of this activity? Have you got an idea of the gap, just so that I can tell people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the gap is not too big actually, it's pretty much user pay. So what, cool. what we look at is the number of dogs times the, the fee, um, assuming that um, we get a really good response rate to that. I think right now we only have 200 dogs out of 5,000 that haven't registered this year that we're following up on. Um, and we look at the, the expenditure of the team. The only thing that's a little bit tricky, as Alice touched on, is that they are, um, we have to take a rough guess at what portion of their role is animal control, and that yes. can vary. Yeah. So we take a guess about 60% of the bylaws officer's role is around animal control. Um, but obviously over summer, where dog issues go up, so frequent camping and area yeah. 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 so, yeah, so That's useful, thank you. So, any other questions? Do you put dogs down? Um, yes, we do. Yeah, but it's actually a bit of a highlight. Um, for the last year, we put um, we've, we've been concentrating more on rehoming, so our, our adoption rates have gone from um, I think three to forty. So, so in fact, you just got to beg you call them to do that. Um, putting down the yes, yeah, we don't do that ourselves. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, well, it's been a, as I was touching, it's been a real success story here. Um, we've had some really dedicated animal control officers. Obviously, we um, temperament test the dogs first, and if they're able to be rehomed, and in this case, we've been able to rehome a lot more than last year. Um, there are some dogs that can't be, yeah. or after an attack, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's not fair for the dog one. Yeah. Like John? You may have just answered my question actually. I was looking at a number of dog attacks. In fact, we only had one prosecution, so most of those resolved through euthanasia, are they? Correct. Most dog owners will um, uh, surrender their dog to us if there's been a dog attack. Um, often because they're, they're surprised themselves that the dogs acted that way. They might be family members. And, and okay, no, that's, that's yeah. just doing a good job saying it. <laughs> that, that, that one's just being resolved and can be caught as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to move that, Gary? Yeah. Sentiment? Seven. Is there any further discussion? 
Well done. Appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Great Thank job. You. All those in favour of this hour? Aye. 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 Aye.